let's talk about the replenishment system in the body. Sure. This is, to me, this is like, if you're gonna learn one thing in a year about your body and about health, I think this is the most empowering thing you can learn. Okay. Because it's not only gonna help you understand minerals, it's gonna help you understand your body and it's gonna help you understand all of the other supplementation you're taking and how useful is it. It's okay. gonna help you vet things, okay? okay? So it has to do with this word bioavailability. You know, yeah. this is a word that gets bandied about a lot. It People sure talk does. about it, right? Yep. Yeah. So, but it has the these three stages. The first is digestion. So the first question is, how well does something you put in your mouth actually get digested? And that has to do with what it's made of, but it also has to do with how well your gut is working. Right. And the thing I learned that blew my mind is, unless something that you eat digests all the way down to its ionic chemical components, it cannot be absorbed. And if it is being absorbed, it's because you have gut dysbiosis, and now it's gonna cause problems, meaning leaky gut. So so, okay, so let me think that through for a moment. So you're saying that even if I go to my farmer's market and I buy the healthiest broccoli I can find. That's right. And I come home and I eat it raw, I don't even cook it. My gut isn't able to break it down into a usable Well, amount. it might, depending on the health of your gut. Okay. Okay, some portion of it is gonna come through your bowel, you know, undigested. Just look yeah. in the toilet, you'll see. Yeah, you know? right. Depending on how well your gut yeah. is working that day, um, you'll see how well well, the food yeah. actually, yeah. But I mean, sometimes when I have problems, you know, I'll see, I'm like, wow, that stuff's coming through. It's not digested. Yeah. Other times things look really well digested, yeah. right? Right. So the way it's supposed to work is all that stuff's be, supposed to be totally broken down. And the only stuff that goes through is the fiber. Right. You see? Okay. The stuff that doesn't, you're not, it's all the nutrients have been sucked out of it down and digested down to their ionic components. And the interesting thing is, so your gut is lined and you know this, the gut is lined with these things called villi, and they kind of look like fingers. And each of those fingers is lined with these epithelial cells. And each one of those cells is lined with these receptor sites. And each receptor is specific. For what? For like magnesium or magnesium citrate or magnesium gluconate or potassium. I mean, they are specific and you have a lot of for magnesium, but you have a very small, important amount for things like phosphorus or molybdenum or chromium. Are they things, only for minerals or are they for vitamins? They're for, well, then there's, of course, there are receptors for sugars and, you know, other nutritional elements, salts, nutritional right. elements. That, salts are really minerals too, okay? But most of them are minerals. Think about that it. That is crazy. So, Isn't that mind-blowing? That's mind-blowing because so, receptors to me are like the body's way of saying, this is what I need. Exactly. Because they're like little, to me, they're like little gloves that are like, hey, let me catch that. I got to exactly. catch this. I got to catch hormones. I got to have, and like, yeah, I so, never so, heard isn't this amazing? Yeah, it's totally this, amazing. This completely blew my mind. So I thought, here's this guy who's an athlete and he's, somebody says, you know, he has cramping and somebody says, you need magnesium. So he takes all this magnesium, okay? And he's flooding his gut with magnesium. Doesn't matter. He only has so many receptors. Ah. Okay. He's waste, he's, he's, he's not, he, and that's why we say Americans have the most expensive urine in the world mm -hmm. because we're taking all these supplements and most of it is just washing out through the urine. Can it get like insulin resistance where if you get too many things flooding at those receptors at the same time? No, not really. Okay. No, but what does happen is it creates imbalance in the gut. Okay. So think about the way I, you know, this is what's so amazing is we tend to think someone along the line said, you know, you have a minimum daily requirement of this much magnesium and 240 milligrams of potassium, whatever, which is ludicrous because why should you have the same amount that is needed than me or some mm. performance? athlete or somebody who sits on the couch all day or whatever. I mean, we all in our, the size of our body, everything, the way our bodies operate, everyone, it's very specific. Now, in its incredible, infinite wisdom, the body said, that's okay. You need as much as you need. I need as much. We flood the system and it will just have the right amount of receptors. So now what happens when we put a huge amount of 320 milligrams of magnesium into your system? Do you know what it does? It starts trying to balance that with calcium and it pulls calcium out. Oh. So what happens with performance athletes as they age, they've been taking all this. This is an example of what I'm talking about. Right. They actually start getting osteoporosis because they've taken so much magnesium mm. that their body is trying to balance by pulling the calcium out of their 
your bones. So this is what I'm talking about. This is a complete paradigm shift about yeah. how we think our body is not a car. It doesn't work like that. You can't say, oh, I need gas, put in gas. I need oil, fill the reservoir right. of magnesium or potassium. It doesn't work like that. It's these receptor sites. So what we need to do is start infusing our system in a very balanced way with minerals that support the overall homeostasis of our gut. It, you know, it's the word homeostasis keeps like coming up in all the work that I've been doing because when we look at hormones, there's this tendency to be like, well, you know, if I'm a menopausal woman, I need more progesterone. I should get as much progesterone as possible. But if you get too much progesterone, you throw off estrogen, yeah. very much like what you just said with magnesium and calcium. Calcium, yes. And yet our culture is very focused on more is better. But what I I just heard is when we're dealing with the human body, more is not only not better, but it could be harmful. Yes. And the thing that I think we, we've been learning, you know, we're, yeah, right. we're all grown yeah. and we've, and as we learn, we, you know, we swing too far to the right or left or wherever, you know, and we, and the thing that I'm wanting to help people understand is the body is a homeostasis engine. Your body, every second, every millisecond of every day, it is working to clean things up, fix things, create balance. If you put too much magnesium, in, it will start flushing that magnesium really fast to get rid of it. You know, it's giving you Herxheimer symptoms because you've got some toxin. It's it's an incredibly Super incredible phenomenal. Yeah. So the thing about minerals is what minerals do is they support that entire homeostasis engine. Because if you can support every mitochondria mm -hmm. to be able to generate the energy inside the cell to keep the cell operating aerobically so that all all of the processes when you're fasting those autophagy processes mm -hmm. that are so amazing i wanted to tell you a story that but i'll tell you later about autophagy and how powerful it is but if you can support the body the energy generation engine of the body then all of those balancing fixing mm -hmm. removing processes are fuel they actually work take, they actually take place the, yeah. the hormone balance the adrenal balance the you know etc 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 i don't want to get off the <laughs> Autophagy. Yeah. And you can tell me your story in a moment because what I'm thinking now is I know we probably don't have any studies on this, but could we make correlation that if I go into 20 hour fast and I'm in a state of autophagy and I'm locked and loaded with a lot of minerals, my autophagy process, the ability of my body to use autophagy as a self healing, self clean, mm -hmm. clean tool is going to be better. Whereas if somebody's mineral depleted and they go into a 20 hour fast, they're not getting as deep of an autophagy experience. Experience. Could that be, is that possibility? Exists? Absolutely. Because autophagy itself is a cellular process that is fueled with ATPs generated by the mitochondria. So if the, mito see? Yeah, so if the mitochondria doesn't have enough minerals, then it can't make enough ATP, which can't fuel the, the autophagy process. And people get dizzy and they get, you know, all of those symptoms that you described, which and is why the minerals in the electrolyte support for people who are fasting is so important. Right? Such a deeper. Isn't it cool? I love it. I just, this is why I love conversations like this. But here's what's interesting to me is I can tell you when I first went out into the world trying to talk about, I did something called the timeline benefits chart of fasting. Mm -hmm. And I was like, at eight hours, it does this, at 10, 20. And that was like a big thing that I did for a while. And people would debate me. They're like, no, at 17, autophagy doesn't kick in at 17, it does this and that mm -hmm. study. And we get in these science studies. Mm -hmm. And what I always want to think about is that science gets us in the ballpark, but we need nuance. We need conversations like this. Mm -hmm. so that people understand that science is just helping us give us broad explanations of what might be going on, but we need to get to the biggest root that we can get to if we want to understand the human body. And two of the things we've talked about today, the power of the mitochondria and homeostasis are two things that I think we can't emphasize enough. So, and you know, the person who says, no, it's 17 hours or whatever. If a person was fully mineralized, maybe it would happen in six. Right. I don't know. Well, you see, so I, you see. <laughs> right. So I just saw a study because I'm writing my next book on serotonin and that there was fasting could actually activate the 5H2A serotonin receptor site, which is my new fascination, in only eight hours of fasting. Interesting. I'm like, how is it doing that in eight hours? But it again, if we always say, well, why is the body working? The body's always working for you. Always. Always. Always working for it you. It just might not feel like that, but it's always working for you. So with this understanding that minerals help us bring normal processes back, 